Hello, I'm Hayden Ireland, an automation specialist with electric supply and equipment. In this video, we're going to discuss how to use this. Hey, Dinko, what's going on? Hey, Hayden, how you doing? It looks like you got a little bit of a problem here. I do. So I had a fault on the PLC with the red light. And uh, it's been down. Did you have a chance to pull the battery and then short the ground to VVB for 60 seconds? Yes, I did. I uh, took it out, grounded it out for 60 seconds, put it back in, and same scenario, fault red light. Did you try pulling the processor out of that chassis and then putting it into a different chassis and powering back up? I put it on another chassis. I have a smaller chassis. I put it in with the same power supply, put the processor in, powered it back up. Same scenario, red light flashing. All right, and Dinka, I think you got a dead processor. You think so? I think I think you do. I think you do. Did you get the parts that you ordered for us to do this phase migration? I, I got the parts in yesterday for the, uh, the small compact Logix and the connection card for the slick rack. I'm all set to go. Did you finish using the conversion utility to take the RS Logix 500 program and convert it to an ACD file so that it'll run in the compact logics that you ordered? Uh, I did do the conversion of the uh, program and uh, it's ready to go. That's good. All right. Well, let's get started then. Let's do it. The interaction you just witnessed highlighted a very important component when modernizing your legacy system. The 1747 AENTR is the key to controlling a chassis of slick I.O. modules with a compact or control logics processor. The slick processor is removed from the chassis and then replaced with the AENTR Ethernet adapter module. At this point, the Logix 5000 processor sees the Ethernet adapter, the slick chassis, and all of the I.O. modules as a remote chassis in its I.O. configuration. What was a local chassis for the slick now becomes a remote chassis for the compact or control logic processor. The only parts needed to do a phased migration is the 1747 AENTR Analogix 5000 processor with an Ethernet port. Of course, the slick program will need to be converted prior to the migration, and if you have a panel view, you will need to convert the tags in the application. The beautiful thing about a phased migration is the amount of time required to make the hardware change. Pull the slick processor from the chassis and replace it with the adapter module. Then connect the AENTR to the Ethernet port of the processor and power everything up. At that point, I.O. checkout and operational testing can begin. We live in an imperfect world, so if an error is discovered during system testing, we can quickly revert back to the slick processor. We all know that holding up production is a cardinal sin, so reverting back to the original system is as easy as pulling the ANTR from the slick chassis and reinserting the slick processor. The ANTR replaces the slick processor, but can also replace the adapter module in the chassis that are remote to the slick processor, such as the 1747 ASV or the ACN15. What are some of the reasons for using the 1747 ANTR in a phased migration over a full hardware upgrade. Time is a big one. Production schedules may not allow the system to be downed long enough to do a full upgrade. With a phase migration, the switch can be made in minutes. Cost is another factor. Maybe the budget won't allow for a full hardware replacement. The cost of a compact logics processor and the AENTR can be a fraction of the cost of a full system upgrade. If time is the critical factor, then the 1746 to 5069 hardware conversion system may be a great solution. With the conversion system, the terminal blocks, not just the wiring, are removed from the slick I.O. modules. The terminal blocks are then plugged into the adapter cables that connect directly to the new I.O. modules. The 1746 to 5069 conversion system will be highlighted in a separate video. One additional idea to think about is that once the Compact Logix processor is controlling the slick I.O. modules, new I.O. modules can be added to the new processor. Then the I.O. wiring can be moved to the new I.O. modules. Let's get into the details of the AENTR. For more info, please refer to publication 1747-UM076.
A link to the publication is in the description. For diagnostic indicators, the module has Ethernet port link 1 and link 2 status indicators, a module indicator LED, and a four character status display. One of the nice features of the ANTR is that it has two Ethernet ports. For network topologies, this means it can participate on a device level ring or in a linear topology. Legacy networks for remote chassis use a linear or daisy chain topology. So as long as the distance limitations are not exceeded, the new Ethernet runs can follow the old remote I.O. or control net cable runs. If you plan to use the 1747 AENTR, make sure you have a Logix 5000 processor at firmware version 21 or later. Also, verify that the firmware revision on the adapter is at 2.001. This revision, or later, will allow you to replace a processor controlling up to three local chassis or a maximum of 30 slick I.O. modules. The only setup required for the adapter is to set the IP address. You can use the BOOP-P DHCP utility or use the three rotary switches to do this. If you're using the 192.168.1 network address, then the rotary switches can be used to set the last octet of the IP address. If you're using an IP address other than the above, the boot P DHCP utility must be used. See chapter three of the user manual on how to set the IP address using the boot P DHCP utility. Over the past four decades that the slick IO modules were manufactured, 82 different modules were offered. And that doesn't include third party modules. Of those 82 modules, there are 17 that you cannot use with the 1747 AENTR module meaning that you have to remove the unsupported module from the slick chassis and figure out a different way to accomplish the same function. We're not going to offer alternatives for every single unsupported module listed in the user manual, but here are a few suggestions. Any SIP motion capable processor can replace an HSRV servo module without the need for an external I.O. module. If your system is using a 1747 DCM, then that means two slick processors needed to communicate I.O. status in real time. Produced and consumed tags in a Logix 5000 processor can do that same exact thing. If your slick has a device net scanner module, you can upgrade the scanner to an Ethernet to device net linking device, which is part number 1788 EN2DNR. Specialized modules for extrusion and blow molding are no longer needed if you're using a Logix 5000 processor. And my biggest tip is don't try to make a 1746 HSCE or HSCE2 high-speed counter card wired to an incremental encoder work in a remote chassis with the ANTR. Go get yourself an 842E Ethernet IP encoder, which is completely configurable, and experience the ease of integration without a high-speed counter card. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe to the ES and E TV YouTube channel for more modernization tips, tricks, and updates.